So now that we know how to graph two points, something that we want to calculate beyond that is how to find the distance between the two points that we just graphed. So I'm going to review of how to find the distance between two numbers on just one dimension first on a number line, and then we're going to use that to figure out how to find the distance between two points or two dimensions or on the Cartesian plane or rectangular coordinate system. So going back to finding the distance between two numbers on a number line, I've used the hypothetical numbers here, A and B. The formula that we use is the absolute value of one of these numbers minus the other. And it doesn't matter if we take the first minus the second or the second minus the first because we're going to end up with the same number and then we're going to take the absolute value of it which is going to make it positive. And the reason that we need it to be positive is because distance obviously has to be positive. So let's do an example of this. Find the distance between 4 and negative 8 on the number line. Now, we can do this by drawing up a number line and just completely ignoring that there is a formula there in the first place. And that's okay for an example like this, when your numbers are fairly close together. But if you look at example 2, we wouldn't want to draw up a number line for those large numbers there because that would take too long and we know that there's got to be easier ways. So we're going to do this by using the formula and it doesn't matter which way you prefer to do it. So I can do it as the absolute value of 4 minus a negative 8. Just don't lose the double negative. Or I could do it as the absolute value of negative 8 minus 4. And let me prove to you that both of these get the same answer. Now, the thing that you have to remember with absolute values is that you need to simplify the inside of the absolute value first and then take your absolute value as the last step. So it has hidden parentheses, which we use in our PEMDAS process. In the first one, I can cancel out my double negative, so that makes it positive, which gives us absolute value of 12, and the absolute value of 12 is just 12 itself. In the second way, negative 8 minus 4 gives me the absolute value of negative 12, and the absolute value makes it positive. So either way we get it, we figure out the distance between 4 and negative 8 on the number line is 12. And if you want to go ahead and draw it up and double check it, that's perfectly fine if your numbers are close together. So I'm going to go by twos here. On the right, I have 2, 4. On the left, I have 2, 4, 6, 8, so negative 8. And I can count the distance in between going by twos. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So that confirms that I have the right answer there. Okay. So in my example two, I'll do the same thing, but first I suggest that you pause the video and see what answer you can come up with. All right, I showed you three different ways back in example one. All three ways are completely unnecessary, so pick one way which I wouldn't suggest to be the number line and go with it. So I'm going to go with the absolute value of negative 32 minus a negative 127. My double negatives cancel out, giving me the absolute value of negative 32 plus 127. So I just need to add these two numbers. I'm going to mentally think about it as 127 minus 32, which gives me 95, and the absolute value of 95 is 95. So the distance between these two numbers on the number line are 95 units away from each other. So now that we've reviewed how to find distance in one dimension, let's see how this is applicable when we create it in two dimensions or on our graphing system. So I have an example here. Example one is find the distance between these two points or these two ordered pairs. Negative three, five, and negative three, negative eight. 
Now, I believe that you can actually figure out this distance on your own without me giving you any instruction. So I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can figure out the answer to this problem. Now this is possibly one of the easiest examples that I can come up with because even though I've drawn it on two dimensions here, I'm really only looking at one dimension. Since I have the same x value for my points, that means I'm really only needing to calculate the distance of my y value. So ultimately, all I have to do is count the distance of my y values here. Now I can count that by counting the tick marks in between these two points, or I can do that formula that I just showed you. The absolute value of this y distance minus the absolute value of my second y distance. And again, since my x values are the same, those don't really matter in this example, and I'm just calculating the distance between my two y values. My double negatives cancel out. That gives me the absolute value of 5 plus 8, which is 13, and so the distance between these two points or ordered pairs is 13. And of course, if I counted the tick marks in between, I would come up with the same thing. So if your line is straight vertical, like we see here, or if I had a straight horizontal line, like this example here, I could calculate the distance by just counting the tick marks in between, or by using that distance formula that we saw from before. Let me give you a little bit more complicated of an example here. Now we know that this example is different than all the other examples that we've seen up until now because this is actually an example of finding a distance between two things when I am looking at two dimensions. Notice that neither my x values nor my y values are the same. Now typically at this point, a math teacher would just give you the distance formula and have you go from there. But instead of giving you a distance formula where you just memorize and use, I want you to see an alternate way of the way that you can compute the distance of this example and any other examples from here on out. And this is using a process that you probably already know. It is called Pythagorean's Theorem. Pythagorean's theorem says, if you have a right triangle, meaning a triangle that has a right or a 90 degree angle, and you have each of your sides labeled where the long side or the hypotenuse opposite of your right angle is labeled C, then you can figure out the distance of the third side from the other two. And the formula is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So let's figure out how that applies to this example. Now, I don't see a triangle at first glance if I'm just looking at the distance of the screen here. But notice if I compare it up to my x-axis and my y-axis, I can see that it all creates a right triangle. So if I can figure out the distance of my two sides, then that tells me the distance of this green link through my hypotenuse. And so that will give me the distance that I'm looking for. So in my triangle, let me label this as side A here and B there. But if you rearranged them, it would work out the same. And typically, we would label the hypotenuse C, because that's what our formula says. But I'm going to label it as D or distance instead. So the formula that I'm going to use is A squared plus B squared is equal to D squared, where I'm trying to come up with the length of D for distance. So when I'm trying to figure out my length of A, I can either just count the tick marks that I see here, or I can use that formula that we've been focusing on in the last examples. I would just come up with the absolute value of the difference between my two X values. So my A here is the absolute value of this X value, which is seven, minus this X value, which is zero. So, that gives me that the distance of A is seven units, which makes sense because it's seven tick marks away from the origin. 
Same thing with B. The formula is the difference between my two Y values, 0 and negative 5. And so the difference between those two, an absolute value that is 5. So my B distance is 5. And again, that makes sense because I'm 5 units away from the origin. So now that I know my A and my B distance, I can use that in this equation to solve for what my D distance is. So let me plug in that A is 7 squared plus B is 5 squared, and I'm going to use that to calculate up my D. 7 squared is 49 plus 5 squared is 25. Add 49 plus 25, that gives me 74 which is equal to d squared. I am looking for what d is, so I need to get rid of the square off of that d. My opposite operation is square root. Whenever I force in a square root, I also should be forcing in both a positive and negative, so two solutions. So that gives me that d is equal to square root of 74, and d is equal to negative square root of 74. But we know that we're looking for distance here, so this negative square root does not apply. So if you accidentally forgot the plus or minus, then you lucked out in this problem, and in this problem only. Okay, but if you're looking for something and you say my distance is square root of 74, most people are not going to know what that means. So what we need to do is we need to find an approximate solution for this. This answer here is my exact solution. And if you could simplify that by doing a good pi, bad pi, I and the homework would expect you to do so. Um, this one doesn't simplify it by that. But we also want to figure out what this is approximately. And notice my notation switches. Exact is a straight equal sign. Approximate is a squiggly equal sign. So what I need to do then is I need to type this in my calculator. So let me pull that up. Type in square root of 74. My square root is above the square button, so I hit the second in the square root. And then I type in 74. Push over to get out of my square root. If you have an older version, then you'll just put that 74 in parentheses. When I push enter, that gives me my approximation. Typically, the homework says to round to three decimal places, but make sure you read it so you know exactly what it's looking for. In this one, I get 8.602 if I round it to those. So my approximate distance is 8.602. So that gives me the length of this third side or the length between my two points, the distance between my two points that I'm looking for. Now, in this example, it was easy to see Pythagorean's theorem because I had a triangle drawn up by my x-axis and my y-axis. But you can use this in any example, whether it lands on those axes or not. So ultimately, you can find any distance between two points by using Pythagorean's theorem. So in this video, this is where I'm going to stop here, but in the next video, I'll do some more examples, and I'll actually give you that distance formula.